This is the story of a cable ship called Iris, or to be more precise, it is the story of cable ships called Iris, as there's been more than one. The first began life as a 26-gun frigate. It was built as a little Spartan-class sixth rate in Pembroke Dockyard and was deployed to the Far East in the 1840s. When it returned home, it was decommissioned and laid up in ordinary, stripped of its guns and rigging and roofed over, rather like the frigate Unicorn which you can see today in Dundee. The Iris was loaned to the Atlantic Telegraph Company with its sister in the mid-1860s and then sold to the successor to the company, the Telegraph Construction and Maintenance Company, or Telcon, in 1869. Both frigates were used as cable hulks at Sheerness and supplied the Great Eastern. The second Iris was the first true cable ship to bear the name, so we'll call it Iris 1. Built in Glasgow at the turn of the century, it was almost 300 feet in length and had four cable tanks. It was owned by the Pacific Cable Board and bore the prefix HMCS, reportedly the first cable ship to do so. The Iris was based in New Zealand and weathered the First World War in the Pacific. Commanded by its long-serving captain, H.R. Hughes, it diverted the Norfolk to Doubtless Bay cable into Auckland, and it was involved in the capture of the German commander, Count von Luckner. In 1929, it was sold to Imperial and International Communications Limited, later to become known as Cable & Wireless, where it was rechristened CS Recorder, the second cable ship to bear that name. One of its bells is in the museum's collection. The third Iris, which we'll call Iris II, bore the prefix HMTS and was built at Swan Hunter in 1940 for the General Post Office. It had three cable tanks. The fourth Iris, or Iris III, was the biggest of this little list and was built with its sister Monarch in the 1970s. Its gross registered tonnage was over 3,800 and it was 97 meters long. Both the Iris and the Monarch were owned by the successor to the General Post Office, the Post Office Corporation, and both were based in Southampton. Like Iris 1, the Iris 3 had some war service. In 1982, Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands and the Royal Navy sent a task force into the South Atlantic. The Iris was fitted with a larger flight deck and carried stores to the Falklands via Ascension Island. A year later, the Iris was transferred to BT International, later BT Marine Limited, and both the Iris and the Monarch were eventually sold to Global Marine Systems Limited in 1999. So there we have it, four cable ships called Iris, a frigate, the ship that caught a German raider, a post office ship, and a ship that went to the Falklands.